know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Um, so nice to, um, to be with you guys this Sunday night. I'm so happy to have the esteemed scholar, Dr. Karenga, in the house. This is going to be a great and timely happy talks. Um, so before we get started, um, I just want to, you know, a little housekeeping, guys. Make sure you are liking and sharing this video. Um, it's very important that we, um, you know, get the word out. Kwanzaa is uh, less than uh, seven days. No, it's a, uh, no, it's less than seven. No, it's it's eight days away, <laughs> eight days away. So we want to, you know, make sure we are ready um, for Kwanzaa. Less than a week, actually. It starts on the 26th. Um, and so it's important that we get this information out to everyone. OK. Um, also, I just want to just, you know, give a couple of shout outs to everyone that's in the um, that's in the chat while we wait for a couple of people to come in. Uh, Sydney, I see Sydney is uh, was the first person who who couldn't wait <laughs> to listen to Dr. Karanga. That's what's up. Uh, Sydney has traveled with us to Kemet uh, uh, this year. I keep thinking it's 2023, but we're still in 2022. Um, so peace to him. Peace to Rashimela Combo, Elizabeth. Uh, I see Strawberry is in the house. Um, Barbara and Ronnie. Uh, yes. Um, Oh, everyone, Sharon. All right. So, uh, family, I just want to just, you know, go over a little couple little uh, events that we have going on. The first thing is that we are actually going back to Kemet next year, uh, May 25th to June 3rd. And this is going to be uh, a, a really special trip because this will be one of the first times that we've actually had two trips going on at the same time. And you can go to iCatTours.com to get the information. So we're going to have one group going to Egypt and exploring Dubai. And then we have another group exploring Egypt and, um, and then also taking a, a cruise down the Nile River at the same time. And there's a couple of days that we'll meet up as, you know, as a one big family. But that's going to be a really fun um, and um, informational you know, time. So it's May 25th to June 3rd. It's a perfect Kwanzaa gift for yourself. I'm just saying, you know, you get to go to a place and learn more about yourself. So um, that's going on. And you can go to iCatTours.com and get, uh, you know, get more information about that. And also make sure um, that you guys are signed up for the newsletter. Okay. And if you go to HappyFilm.com, you can, you know, get signed up because that's how, you know, we, we give out information. Sometimes uh, we have discounts and stuff like for this event that we have coming up right here. Let me just show you. All right, right here. A day of black excellence. This is going to be huge. It's a great way to start off um, the year. February 4th, we will be live in New York City. And so this, all these people that are on this flyer will be in the house live, like where you can touch them live. Um, but also, if you cannot make it to New York City, we will be on, um, you know, you'll be able to see it on live stream. So we're going to have Dr. Ken Harris. He also was our host in uh, when we did One Africa Power and Unity when we were in Detroit. So he will be hosting you know, backed by popular demand, he will be back hosting. He's from the National Business League. He is the president. So we have Dr. Ken Harris. And also in the house, we will have Dr. Susan Tata, Dr. Georgina Falu, Professor James Small, Infodishi Juhutimis, Kaba Kabane, and, uh, you know, our esteemed young scholar, Riza Islam, will be our, um, you know, like our, our big speaker. But really, we have, it's, it's, it, this is going to be uh, a whole day of packed events. All right. So those are just people who are giving presentations and, and lectures. Now, we're also going to show 
uh, some extended clips of Hoppy, the role of economics in the developments that, excuse me, Hoppy, <laughs> I'm getting excited, the role of economics in the development of civilization. That's Taiki Grant's film. He is the writer, producer, and director of Hoppy. And then we will also have Amadeus Christ in the um, house. And he is the writer, producer, and director of um, Out of Darkness, Heavy is the Crown, Volume 1. So he will be showing extended clips of his film, and we will be showing extended clips of Hoppy. Also, we will have Brand Nubian um, as a musical performer. Performers, they will be in the house as well as Jamar Milton, and we're going to have a poet, lyrical faith. Now. If this wasn't enough, okay, we're gonna have all this, all this stuff going on. We're gonna have breakout times for people to, to network. We have, also we have vending options. We have a few vending spots left. I know you guys are gonna try to wait to the last minute on this, but quite honestly, if, if you are in the house, there's less than 10 sp um, uh, vending opportunities. And I mean, we have 10, but we only have a couple left. And so you imagine we have a huge, 400 seat place and only 10 vendors. So you're going to do all right as long as you have a product that people want, right? So make sure if you, um, you know, if you, you know, want to vend that you, you secure your tickets um, right away. And if you are signed up to the newsletter, you get a little discount on your live stream tickets. We, we have some VIP tickets, but those are sold out. Um, also, we are going to have as much of the happy cast that live in the New York City area will be in the house. So that's your Dr. Uh, Rosalind, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, um, you know, Infudi, she's gonna be um, speaking as well as Dr. Georgina Falou and Professor James Small, but Asar Imhotep, like we have a, f a few people coming up. So this is gonna be real nice um, if you wanna get, you know, to see everybody. If you saw the Hoppy film, you're like, wow, everybody's gonna be there. You know, most of everyone that was in the film that live in the New York City area will be in the house. Um, yes, I'm, I'm with you, uh, uh, Elizabeth. Dr. Harris did an excellent job. Um, and also, so it's gonna be this whole big night, okay? Well, day, because we started at one o'clock in New York City in Queens at the JPAC Center. Um, so it's, you know, it, this is a time that you want to, you know, make sure you bring the family out and and um, and and really and really pay attention to this day. We're going to be talking about black excellence, right? And we're going to be appreciating and loving on black folks. We do every day, but this is like an extra special day because it's not only about us recognizing black excellence out there, but it's it's really more about recognizing the black excellence in ourselves. You know, we've had a lot of guests come on and they talk about, you know, these things that, you know, we as as black folks is just inherently have going on for ourselves. But sometimes I think we may perhaps take some of, the, you know, our gifts as, you know, we take them for granted. So this is a day, you know, for us to really look inside and 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 notice and appreciate the black excellence in ourselves and to share it with everyone else. And so, um, you know, please, family, make sure that you are um, supporting um, the Hoppy Movement by attending. Or, you know, if you can't make it in, like I said, we have live stream and everything will be live streamed. And so it's not like, you know, a little break and you don't get anything. We're going to, you know, have continuous, um, continuous live stream. Um, so, which, you know, when you when you start talking about, you um, you know, black excellence and shout out to Tinas. Um, you know, he is our martial arts um, warfare man. I mean, that's the only way I can describe him. You got to make sure you follow him on Facebook. Um, and I see Lucille is in the house. My, uh, my uncle, Dave Alexander, much love to you too. Isaiah, James. Um, so this is the deal. When you are talking about, um, yeah, I'm with you right here, Bakari. When you talk about black excellence, okay, you know, Dr. Karanga is black excellence, you know, just on display and he's with us. Um, he's written goo gobs of things. I'm going to get into his bio in a minute. But when, when, you know, this is an idea of black excellence, you know, of, you know, from a man who realizes his gifts and are sharing it with us. OK, because, you know, it's it's not enough to, you know, to to have your your gifts, but you're supposed to share them. You know, that's why we're here um, in this world to share 
to share our gifts. And Dr. Karenga is a good example of someone doing that. So I just want to give you a little background. This case is your first time, you know, checking out Hoppy and checking out Dr. Karenga, which I don't think it is. But let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, this is the first time. Um, Dr. Malaga Karenga is professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at California State University, Long Beach. Dr. Karenga is the creator and Pan-African of the Pan-African cultural holiday Kwanzaa and the Nuguzo Saba, the seven principles, and author of the authoritative text titled Kwanzaa, a celebration of family, community, and culture. An activist scholar, he is the chair of the, of the organization, US, and the National Association, ah, if I can speak, I'm so excited, I'm sorry. Um, he is um, the chair of the National Association of Kwaida Organizations and executive director of African American Cultural Center and the Kwaida Institute of Pan-African Studies, also co-chair of the Black Community Clergy and Labor Alliance, BCCLA, and initiating founding member of AC, ASCAC. Dr. Karenga is also the author of numerous scholarly articles and books, including Essays on Struggle, Position and Analysis, Kwaida, uh, Questions of Life and Struggle, Selections from the Husia, Sacred Wisdom of Ancient Egypt, Ma'at, the Moral Idea in Ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethics, intro, uh, yeah, African ethics, Introduction to Black Studies, the fourth edition, and Odu Ifa, the ethical teachings. He is currently writing a major work on the social and ethical philosophy of Malcolm X titled The Liberation Ethics of Malcolm X, Critical Consciousness, Moral Grounding, and Transformative Struggle. Also, he writes a weekly, weekly column on the opinion page for the Los Angeles Sentinel for 15 years. That's what's up. Uh, Dr. Karenga is a recipient of numerous awards for scholarship, leadership, and service, including the Paul Robeson Zorro Nielsen Hurston Award for scholarly work, significantly, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, the Paul Robeson Zorro Neil Hurston Award for scholarly work, significantly um, contributing to the understanding, development, and appreciation of African world culture, the CLR James Award for outstanding publication of scholarly works um, that advance the discipline of Africana and Black studies, and the Presidential Award for exemplary service and outstanding contribution to the field of black studies, all from the National Council for Black Studies. He is also the subject of the book by Dr. Malefe Asante titled Milana Karenga, an intellectual portrait. It's nice, an intellectual portrait. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Milana Karenga. Peace, Dr. Karenga. Peace. It's good to see you again, Felicia. Good to yeah. be on your program. And thank yeah. you for the invitation and a chance to dialogue around critical issues facing us as African people. One hundred percent. All right, so let's just get into it. Mm -hmm. So let's just start from the beginning. How did you? How and why did you create Kwanzaa? Mm -hmm. I created Kwanzaa in the midst of the Black Freedom Movement, in the wake of the, the martyrdom and assassination of Haji Malcolm X, and in the wake of the Watch Revolt. So it was in the midst of the Black Freedom Movement that I began to consider, what should I do to participate in this movement? So, you know, I'm, I'm working on my doctorate at UCLA, and I leave school so I can, you know, contribute to the movement, help build the movement. And I began to build my organization, US. I began to develop, further develop my philosophy, Kaoida. And I developed seven principles in Guzo Saba. And then I created Kwanzaa uh, in order to 
teach though. So I created Kwanzaa, something on that. I created Kwanzaa for four fundamental reasons. Usually I say three, but the first one, because I introduce it as contributing to the struggle, that's the first one, to advance the struggle of black people. I come in the midst of a liberation struggle and Kwanzaa reflects that in its language, in its focus, et cetera. Second, <clears throat> uh, I created Kwanzaa to, uh, to reaffirm our rootedness in African culture because we had been, as I've said so many times, lifted out of our culture uh, by the Holocaust of enslavement. And so our struggle, as Anana Amikar Cabra said, was in great part to return to our own history and culture, right? So that we could, as we said, speak our own special culture truth and make our own unique contribution uh, to the forward flow of human history, and especially to reconceive and reconstruct this country. And thirdly, I created Kwanzaa to give us a time as African people all over the world when we could come together, reaffirm the bonds between us, and meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. What does it mean to be the fathers and mothers of humanity and human civilization? to stood up first and spoke the first human truth and to introduce some of the basic disciplines of human knowledge in the Nile Valley. What does that mean to us? What does it mean to be the sons and daughters of the Holocaust of enslavement? How does that make us appreciate freedom and justice, right? And reaffirmation of our dignity and the dignity of human persons, right? What does it mean, right? And how do we contribute to that? And what does it mean to be the authors and heirs of the reaffirmation of our Africanness and our struggle tradition in the 60s, right? So that's when we went back to black, right? When we say back to Africa, back to black, liberation is coming from a black thing, right? This is when we had this consciousness and we have to give credit to the Nation of Islam and the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his uh, star people, his, his majors, a future pupil and most competent uh, scholar, active intellectual, Haji Malcolm X, right? Uh, that we learn most of this from, right? Yes. And the learning of blackness. So, so more than any other time, Felicia, as you know, that during Kwanzaa, we talk about and focus on being African in the world. And Africa, uh, Africa becomes a central point for understanding and asserting ourselves. That's one of the beautiful things about it. Kwanzaa now is celebrated by millions and millions of people, African people throughout the world, African community on every continent in the world. In Africa, of course, in North America, South America, uh, Asia, Europe, the islands of the sea, right? I mean, this last week we got a card from Ecuador, Africans in Ecuador, right? Nice. People at the top, Ogun Ty. Ogun is here, right? They were talking about how they practice African culture and Kwanzaa brings them together to do that. That's a beautiful thing, right? And then the final uh, reason I created Kwanzaa, after you know contributing to the struggle, reaffirming our rootedness in African culture, giving us a time to come together, reaffirm the bonds between us, and meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. The fourth reason is to introduce and reaffirm the importance of African communitarian values, values that stress and strengthen family, community, and culture. Mm -hmm. And of course, the hub and hinge on which the whole holiday turn are the communitarian values of, of the Nguzo Saba, of the seven principles, which are Umoja unity, Kujichagalia, self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujimara, cooperative economics, neo purpose, Kumba creativity, and Imani faith. And this, I should say this, this took years of research. Therefore, when people play, pretend one, uh, I didn't create it, or they helped me create it, or they, you know, just somebody, the ancestors gave it to me, or, you know, some other things that haters and people that just can't see black excellence, can't accept black excellence, right? Yes. Because of the pathology of oppression, right? When they do this, my first question is, what? how did you know anything about this until I told you? Did you know where it came until I wrote the book, right? And I said, this is where 
you know, I drew yeah. from. These are the cultures I studied. These are the languages I studied, right? And it took time. It's, a, it's an intellectual project, creative project. That's why we can't call it an invention or anything like that. It is a creative product, right? And mm -hmm. it comes from an intellectual creativity, a sensitivity to the culture, deep thinking about the culture, research, painstaking, careful research, mm -hmm. and creating something of value that millions of Black people now embrace and see as valuable to them to ground them, to orient them, and to direct their lives toward good and expansive ends. And it's beautiful to see that. So, so when you, okay, so you came up with the principles first, the seven yes, principles. I did. Okay. I Guzo Saba first. Okay. And so um, was there any particular reason why you just did seven versus 10 versus 12? I mean, was it just, was it seven just got, got the point across and then yeah. Okay. First of all, because seven has a spiritual and almost mystical value in Africa, mm -hmm. and of course other parts as well, but it's in Africa spent. And and then second, it's manageable, right? You can manage that, right? Yeah. And also, these were the important ones necessary for my first reason for creating it to contribute to the struggle, right? And this is the if you look at them. They all speak to the language and logic and practice of struggle. Yes. So Umoja, the first one. There is no struggle. There's no hope for us without Umoja. And it's not total unity or Umoja's unity. It's not total unity, but as I introduced in the 60s, operational unity. Unity in diversity. Unity without uniformity. Unity in a principled, purposeful, peaceful, and productive way, right? That's what unity is about. So we start with that. And you look at self-determination. That's one of the demands of the movement, that we determine our lives, that we determine our destiny and daily life, that we control our community, we control the space we occupy, the politics, the economics, the culture of it, right? That was our thing. And that we supported self-determination for Africans everywhere. So we supported the African continental African liberation movement and the liberation movements of African people to our the world African community. And then look at uh, Ujima, Collective Working Responsibility. We need Black United Fronts. We need an active unity. We don't just need a declaration of unity. Every principle must become a practice if it's real, right? So we say take collective responsibility, work collectively to build the good world we all want and deserve to live in. We are our own liberators, we say. The European oppressor is responsible for our oppression but we're responsible for our liberation. And we've got to liberate ourselves. And part of that liberation practice is holding the oppressor responsible and accountable for his oppression of us. And to break this whole, mm -hmm. the, the, the bonds, of, uh, using Haji Malcolm's word, break the bonds of white supremacy, right? That's what we have to do. Get away from that. And we say, don't hug our chains, but break them. And break them in a defiant, and decisive struggle. That's what we have to do. And so Ujima to share, you were just talking about, Ujima, this is for the movement. We need shared work and wealth. We don't need capitalism and communal, communal, consumerism. We need to share work and yes. we need to share the wealth that comes from that collective work together. And in that is this concept Ujima, familyhood. We got to do economics as if we and our community are one family as if we and our people are one family, as if the whole world is a family project. And therefore, we don't damage not only each other, but the earth itself. So we develop an environmental consciousness here, how we use products from the earth to enhance our life and not destroy the very basis of our life on this planet. I mean, that's, that's so, and then of course, Nia, the collective vocation. And we have a return in our people to their traditional greatness, right? But what is greatness, we said. You know, the ancient Egyptians said, the wise are known by their wisdom in the Husea. The wise are known by their wisdom, but the great are known by their good deeds. So we got to do good deeds to restore ourselves to our traditional greatness. Greatness is doing of good deeds. That's what 
uh, Haji Malcolm, uh, Martin Luther King meant when he said everybody can be great because everybody can serve. So let's serve each other. Let's serve our people. Let's serve humanity. Let's serve the best interest for the well-being of the world and all in it. Can we do that? And then, of course, Kuumba creativity. Again, Kwanzaa is a product of that. That is doing all we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited, right? Can we do that? Can we think about that? To raise up Saru's child to practice, to raise up what is in ruins, to repair what is damaged, to rejoin what is separated, to replenish what is debilitated, to set right what is wrong, to strengthen what is weakened, and to make flourish that which is fragile and undeveloped. And then Imani, faith, to believe with all our hearts and our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and then the righteousness and victory of our struggle. You see how the struggle itself informs that language and that logic that we're developing. And it's right out of Africa. There's ancient origins from the first fruit celebration, but there's modern origin from the Black Freedom Movement. Mm. Okay. Um, it, I just want to just... Um, I, I, I want to go back for just one second. When you talked about um, Ujama, because this one is mostly, um, it was closely aligned with Hoppy's mission. What is yes. your vision for cooperative economics? And in what ways do you think systematic oppression has impacted us? Well, appreciation. We used to say, and you can find this in the quote of uh, one of my first, uh, my first publication mm -hmm. was, um, uh, the Quans, uh, the quote of a Kering, and in it I said, black people want to be capitalists and they don't have capital. They don't have the capital, <laughs> nor do they have it in their interest to be capitalists to exploit and pr do predatory practices against each other and the world, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think it's not to hoard wealth not to prey on each other and the world, not to plunder the world's resources, the lands and lives of people, pollute the air and deplete resources and biodiversity. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to find a way to live in harmony with our environment, to walk humbly and gently on the earth, to act justly and to do rightly. And to always, I repeat, walk humbly on the earth, right? And if we do that, we can live long lives, right? This is what Odu Ifa says. Stop pursuing money and begin to pr uh, pursue practices that defend the earth against its enemies. And what are those enemies? Plunder, pollution, and depletion. He's, and the Odu said, in this way, we live. And so as long as we live on earth, it says, may we protect and preserve the earth, for this is our life also. That's the teaching. And we have to remember that, that, that teaching, okay? So Ujama means that we share work and we share well. Ujama comes from the teaching of, um, uh, and, and, and again, that's another thing about all these values, not just the holiday itself, but the values come from years of research, right? About different African cultures, taking a Pan-African approach to the study of Africa and doing with an intellectual excellence that even if you disagree with me, you can't deny the rigor of my research. Even if you come to different conclusions, you can't deny the rigor of, of, of my uh, research and, and the product that is produced. So. What happens is that we, uh, in Walimu, uh, Julius Nayeri, uh, who was former president of, and founder president of the Tanzanian nation, uh, mm -hmm. he introduced this concept of Ujamaa, African socialism. And Ujamaa, again, as I said earlier, is taken from the word Jamaa, which means family. And so the whole concept was to do economics as if your family is involved. Yes. What are you stealing from your family for? What are you uh, hurting or praying on your family for? Yes. You're supposed to do what? Share the work and share the wealth. 
And so that's the whole idea. That's that's a fundamental process there. And so if you do that, then you also have a rightful relationship with the environment. You don't prey on the environment. You don't plunder it. You don't pollute it. You don't deplete it. You use it wisely. Yes. If you do that, then you can live long. And the planet can survive. Look at us in this cli climate uh, change problem where the seas, the, 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 the Arctic is melting. The seas are flooding. Islands are disappearing. Mm -hmm. right? Just think about that. Species are disappearing, right? Africa is most affected by this. The increased desertification of Africa, you know, the destruction of farmlands, right? What will happen to the people in all of this? And so don't ever doubt that what we do to the earth, we are also doing for ourselves. Just mm. like the good we do, we're doing for others, we're doing for ourselves. That's a teaching from the Husea Lady Cha said, said, do good, do good in the world. Doing good is not difficult. Just speaking good is a monument for those who do it. For those who do good for others are also doing it for themselves. Why? Because they're building the moral community they want and deserve to live in. If I speak truth to you, Felicia, if I do good by you, that creates a context in which you want to do good and speak truth to me. But if I lie to you, right? If I'm negative towards you, if I hate on you, if I lie on you, what kind of context is that for me to expect anything else except retribution? Mm. <laughs> what, what can I expect? Man, I, exactly. I can't say, if I got braces in my hand when I embrace and cut, who else is going to run up and say, hug me? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> so, you know, it's so interesting, you know, you, you're talking about this idea because I know when we first started doing, um, like anytime we have, you know, we have screenings or we have like this event coming up, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, people that are involved in the event, we always, we go to them, we're like, hey, listen, we want to do this affiliate link with you, right? Meaning mm -hmm. every time someone gets a ticket, you get a portion and we get a portion because it's not about us all. It's not about Hoppy making all the money because us making all the money does what? It, it it's, it's just like what you're saying. There's no, there's no community. There's no cooperative economics in that. But sometimes people are, it's almost like they don't believe you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like when you're, when you're trying to practice some of these principles, there's um, sometimes there's pushback. You know, when you when you're being sincere about that, has that ever happened to you? You know, when you were like in the beginning um, phases of Kwanzaa, beginning and continuing. <laughs> but you, you know, know that you know that the hate is all the time everywhere. You know why? Not because they're black, but because they're American, and that's the way Ooh. the oppressive society teaches us. They are victims of the pathology of oppression. You see, they have let the oppressor be their teacher and we argue we cannot let our oppressor be our teacher yeah yeah haji malcolm said the logic of the oppressor pardon me the logic of the oppressed cannot be the logic of the oppressor if they want liberation and we say that if you need a new logic of liberation you also need a new language to think differently because you can be conceptually imprisoned the terms we use can conceptually imprison us so that we can't think, not just out of the box, we can't think out of the imprisonment by the dominant society. And that is why we say, Felicia, that we are American by habit and African by choice, and that we have to choose to be African every day. Yes. We used to say in the 60s, they say, how are you doing? We say, just trying to be black. The brothers say, oh, no, I'm already black. I say, no, you're black in color, but are you black in culture and consciousness mm -hmm. and the self-conscious practice that comes from that culture and consciousness? That's a whole different kind of thing. That's some dark white people, right? Yeah. Let's be <laughs> honest, right? But the reality is that you have to see Africa as culture, cultural groundedness, right? So you can speak your own special culture too. And you don't stand in the pale shadow of the oppressor, oppressor asking which way to go. That's a very important thing for us, you know? And as I always say, you don't come to the table, the table of nations 
culturally naked and in need, but fully clothed in your own culture, fully clothed in your own culture, able to speak your own special culture truth and make your own unique contribution to whatever is on the agenda. And if the agenda is not right, tear it up and ask for another one mm. that speaks better to your values, your views, your conception of excellence. And we said we're going to talk about excellence because one of the things we say about African, that's another thing you can you, you can tell the difference between being American and African. And I'm talking about the negative aspect, you know, and that is this. You know, Africa, if it means anything, must be excellent. That's what we always say. From 1965 to now, we say Africa, if it means anything, must be excellent. And that excellence is, first of all, moral excellence. Second, intellectual excellence. Third, social excellence. So the moral excellence, people got to speak truth. They got to do justice. You can follow the seven cardinal virtues that I introduced when we created this conversation and discourse about Martin ethics. We introduced this concept, right? And we, we called the first uh, ASCAC conference, Association for the Study of Classic African uh, Civilization. We not only called the conference, but we named the organization and helped structure it and finance the first things that happened with it and published the first documents with it. So when people try to erase us from history, you know, that's the what I'm talking about the legacy of the pathology of oppression. You know, that, that just goes on, right? So in it, what we wanted to do was to hmm, teach a new excellence, right? The ancient Egyptians said, strive for excellence in everything you do so that there be no fault in your character. For might is great, right? It's effective, it's doable. And it says that although the wicked may gain wealth, wrongdoing never brings its way to a safe point. In the end, it is mocked that endures and enables the upright to say, it is the legacy of my father and mother. So what we try to do is this excellence, right? So we have moral excellence. We have to speak truth, do justice. These seven cardinal virtues say, are this, truth, justice, propriety, harmony, balance, reciprocity, and righteous order. Mm -hmm. Now, look at truth. Can you have any relationship if people are lying all the time? No. So we got to start with that because the hub and hinge on which our whole life turns is relationship. And key to relationship is being truthful. In fact, one of the things you have to say to to justify yourself in the afterlife, in the ancient Egyptian conception, the Martin conception of the afterlife, you got to say, I have not misrepresented myself. I've not been deaf to truth, and I've not turned a blind eye to injustice. I've not winked at it. I've not turned a blind eye to it. So we, this truth and justice are key right there. You got to tell the truth. You got to be fair with each other. You got to treat them the way you would want to be treated, right? Yeah. Nice. Treat them as bearers of dignity and divinity. That's what we say in Kawaita, our philosophy. Treat them as bearers of dignity and divinity. We introduced those concepts that humans are in the image of God before any other text was written, before any other teaching was taught. We taught that, right? Mm -hmm. 4,000 years ago plus. So here's what's happening here. Is that we say that we have to be excellent. We have to teach excellence. Moral excellence, second, intellectual excellence. We've got to develop the mind. You see, people say free the mind, but you've got to free it for what? You got to free it, develop, you got to free it to flourish so that if the mind flourishes, we can create all kinds of goodness in and for the world. But if the mind is hmm, locked down by ignorance or even maybe even worse, it's illusion because the European uh, feeds illusions every day on TV and the social media and the commercial media. And we always said, it's easier to deal with a person who has ignorance, that is the lack of knowledge, than it is to deal with people who have illusions, which is the assumption of knowledge, even in its absence. Mm, yeah. 
assuming that they know and don't know, and they hold on to yeah. the illusions, right? Yes. Just with all these conspiracy theories about medicine and all that, that to people is real, right? And what it does is limits their lives and it makes them vulnerable to the dominant society. We have to have a consciousness that is a consciousness based in resistance in this world, resistance to the dominant society, resistance to evil, and receptive to truth and to justice and to love and to kindness and to caring. We have to do that. And if we don't do that, see people say, oh, we need to love. And then they some thing out of the mouth, they hate on somebody, especially <laughs> black people. They talk about <laughs> black people a lot of time more than they do white people. It's not everybody. I'm just saying there's enough yeah. of this out there for us to speak to it, right? And then yeah. it, undermines, it undermines excellence. They want to deny excellence. If, if, and these are the people who hug their chains rather than break them. Mm. Who do a tell program with Wait. FBI without a payment, right? Without getting paid. They just deny black excellence. They got a reason why they can't accept it. They don't like you. They don't even know why they don't like, they just don't like you, right? And like you said, people suspect you or somebody else. Why? Because they're listening to, the old people used to say, they, what we call the elders, we say old folks in old days. They used to say, it's the devil in your mind. Yeah. And when they said it, in a Christian context, that means that the evil spirit, there was an evil spirit there. Mm -hmm. But then the messenger Muhammad came and said, it's not the evil spirit in your mind. It's the evil person and people that put these thoughts in your mind. It's mm -hmm. thoughts you're, you're fighting with. It's emotions, real thoughts and emotions put there by somebody else who came as, 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 as uh, uh, Haji Malcolm Dill, came and changed your way of thinking. We said, cut your mind and your head open, open your brain, open your head and put, took out your memory and put the filth of their own understanding of the world in it. And ever since we've been fighting to divest ourselves of that kind of sickness. It's a constant struggle though, because on every television channel, on every radio station, on every post almost on social media, we're supposed to be liberating, right? But now, you know, they got more right wing and wild stuff on there. Oh, my, <laughs> my. Personal, personal stuff on that. It's just pathetic self-referential stuff. You know, just talking about themselves and their dog. When, in fact, social media can be, even though there's some spots that do this, right? I'm not denying that there are. I'm just talking about the problem of increasing and expanding mm -hmm. so that rather than the minimum we do the maximum and rather than we do c work we do a work right some mm -hmm. people are satisfied with a minimum oh i'm glad i passed that class no i say dare excellence right you want the excellence it's like one time i brought a c home to my mama and so i showed her the report card this is when i'm in high school i showed her the um the report card and she said what's that and so i'm saying oh man mama, that's a i said that's a c that means average she said, I know what it means. I'm asking why you got it. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, let me tell you, my kids right, do the same. My Pardon kids right, do the same. I said, my kids try to do the same thing. And my uh -huh. son's exact words was he's like, he's like, at least I passed. I had to do everything I could to sit on my hands. Yeah. And then I had to have a little conversation because mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, it's no, no. Like, why are we, why are we striving for just trying to get by? No, it's like no, no, no. We got to do excellence. Africa means That's anything. Bad. It means excellence. That's some lesson my mother and father taught me. Because sometimes, you know, because I was quicker than a lot of my classmates, I wouldn't take my books home a lot of times. I just and I knew it while they're thinking I'd be reading or they're trying to struggle through something, but it really was not doing myself a good deed. And that's what my mother and father showed that even though you can do this. That's not what you should do. You should go past your own self. Yes. And you got to measure yourself, not by people that are struggling, but by people 
like you who have an extra knowledge and an extra capacity. And yeah. that's what you've got to do. And you've got to dare excellence all the time, moral excellence, intellectual excellence, and social excellence. And that's what I come to. Now, so the intellectual excellence, you've got to develop mind. You, you've got to develop your mind and heart. Now, I want, I want our, our foremothers in the 18th, hundreds and early 1900, they always said the education has to be of the heart, pardon me, of the, of the, uh, of the, the head, the heart, and the hand. They use the three H's, the head, the heart, and the hand. And we, we got rid of the heart, mm. but, but that's so key to being excellence because that teach moral sensitivity to other human beings, to the environment, to animals, to trees, to soil, to flowers, to field, to forest. Now listen, there's a word in ancient Egyptian called ib, and ib means both heart and mind. And it's a teaching that you can't simply feel, you must think, but you can't simply think, you must feel. If you, as I've said so many times, if you can think and can't feel, then like our oppressor, you could kill 50, 70, 100, maybe 100 million Native Americans and call it manifest destiny or the move westward. Mm. And you could enslave and kill and commit holocausts against tens of millions of Africans and call it trade, business gone bad with collateral damage because you had the military capacity to kill them and to conquer and to enslave them and didn't have the moral restraint not to. Mm. So you, if you can think but not feel. You can think that's right. But feel. if you can feel and you don't think, anybody that's been in love and wasn't returned in that love, no, that could be disastrous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. See? So you got yes. to feel and think at the same time. That's called ibic reflection sensitive reflection and that's how it you know i i, I early definition of of, of kawaita philosophy is its ongoing uh, synthesis of the best of african thought and practice in constant exchange with the world but i changed it to an ongoing sense of the best of african sensitivities thought and practice in constant exchange with the world because i wanted to put that Ibic context in there, that feeling, that sensitivity that must go along with our thinking. That, that shapes our intellectual work. That shapes our moral thinking and moral practice. It shapes our social practice, right? And yes. we're talking today, I was lecturing, giving the an annual Founders Kwanzaa message today. And one of the things I was talking about is ibic reflection. And I say the best English words for that is thoughtfulness, which means on one level, caring and considerate, and on the other level, deep thinking. So if I say, oh, that was a thoughtful answer, you know, that's deep. You know, you, you're very thoughtful person. But if I say, that's thoughtful of you to have done that for her, then that's kind and considerate, right? So you got both cognition and consciousness you got both thought and feeling right you yes. got knowledge but you all also got a sensitivity to others indispensable to quality human relations mm, indispensable yes so you know um I, I was just thinking what what year did kwanzaa start what when was the, the first one in 1966 1966 okay mm -hmm. so you and you had kwanzaa at your house or did you have it at an event no, like, at, a, at, at, at one of our um, uh, supporters' house, a brother I'd gone to school with and that I was in the African-American Association with. Okay. And uh, his uh, house is on the street now we call Martin Luther King a Boulevard. And okay. we, 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 we went there. It was the biggest house we had at that time. And uh, one of those old structured houses that has, had a big uh, uh, living room. And so we uh, went there and... Uh, uh, set the pattern for Kwanzaa's ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, uh, so 
gosh, that's amazing. So um, I would love to have been at the first Kwanzaa to see how, how it has evolved. Um, yeah. I've celebrated um, a few Kwanzaa's with, you know, some of, um, some of my <laughs> friends. And, you know, each one is so, um, I mean, they're life transformative, especially because sometimes you're, you're sitting in, in the Kwanzaa circle. And I swear, you, it's like the ancestors are right there with you. Um, mm -hmm. the drumming, like it's just they're 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 so moving. So you know, at this one in, in 1966, um, how many like about how many people were there? And you and you led you led each day of Kwanzaa, or is it you you celebrate the first day? We celebrate each day. We used to celebrate each day. You know, you you celebrate each principal each day, and each each of the members would have, uh, you know, revolving times to have that night. They would have it over their house. So we okay. would move from that original house to another house okay. and to another house and go on like that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's nice. Um, yeah. And I have, I just have to say, um, you know, a lot of people, when you said this, I was like, God, that's such a good, um, I love it. Um, and you said people, people who, people will hug their chains rather than break them right there. That's, mm -hmm. oh God, that's a, that's, that's a good line. I don't know if you wrote that down somewhere. You need to have that written down somewhere. <laughs> it's, in some of my, it's, a, it's in some of my columns. I, wait, I write a weekly column, so I do okay. this. And in my and discussion of Frederick Douglass, I put that down because he was saying about the people and struggling to, to resisting people, that one of the things you notice about them in the independent struggle, and he was speaking about the struggle uh, in the Caribbean and, uh, in, and also in the U.S., he said, these people... They don't hug their chains, they break them, you know? Mm -hmm. That was very yeah. important to me uh, that he, and you know, he was one of the great thinkers of, of all times and a great writer, right? And he freed himself from the Holocaust of enslavement, just like uh, uh, Nana Herod, I should say Nana Frederick, Duff, and Nana Herod Tubman did the same thing. But remember, they did not do it alone. Other people helped them to get yeah. out of where they are. And we should always remember that. And of course, the best story for me for that is the freedom, uh, 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 self-liberation in community of Nana Harriet Tubman, who would not just escape herself, but turn back. Yeah. And find, as I said so many times, freedom from individual escape to the collective practice of self-determination in and for community. Because she said, I didn't feel really free. I needed because all the people, she was happy at first, but she said, but then I got sad because all the people I love were yeah. back there still on the plantation in the Holocaust of enslavement. And I declared that I would spend the rest of my life letting them, wow. getting them free and let them taste the beauty and meaning of this thing called freedom. Mm -hmm. Here she sees freedom as indivisible, like it is, and justice, indivisible. All great goods are indivisible indivisible you can't divide them you know we got to share them or they're not good that's the problem with the oppressor he wants to have freedom by himself and enslave everybody else he wants to have justice for himself just us he says right mm. no justice for us right that's and we got to change that and that means struggle righteous and relentless struggle until the end of it to the end of it um all right um uh, family, please make sure you are liking and sharing this video. Um, and I want to thank Pam for her um, her cash app donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, family. This is I mean, this is the model um, conversation about Black excellence. All right, this you know if you just are joining us right now, make sure you after after you you know after we're done that you go back and you listen to this again. This is one, you know, Dr. Karenga, you're, you're, um, I, I got to put you on this list with Dr. Oba Tashaka, with Professor James Small, is that we, I don't think anybody in this chat can just listen to what you guys are saying and say, okay, I, I got everything. No, we got to go back. We have to listen. We got to rewind because each, e each time that you just give a little, you know, a little conversation, a little something, it, you are adding so much to this. There's so much there's so, so much of what you're saying, you know, that us just with our ears listen to the first time, we can't even capture all of it. We got to go back and listen to it. You know, um, 
you know, so I just appreciate you and, and thank you. And, and when you said you talked about this, um, this rigorous work and the rigorous research that you put into things, it is very clear <laughs> that, you know, um, you know, that you have done this work, you know, that you are doing the work, not that, cause you're definitely not, not done. Um, no. but you know, and yeah. I ain't know, it look, like the Christians say, I ain't, and I ain't no ways tired. <laughs> you don't you don't seem like you're nowhere as tired church people right that's right they're not and, and and we've got to continue the struggle and keep the faith and hold the yes. line as we always say uh that's how we understand and know ourselves right who would we be if we just stopped and sought a comfortable place in oppression right that's it mm. and one of the things you were saying about the different people you mentioned and i have respect for all of them it's important for us to see the difference though and not level or lump without seeing that there's distinct messages from each of us. There's common ground things that we talk about, but yeah. it's different approaches, different focuses, and different contributions. 100%. Each of these people have their own contribution, right? Yes. That's what we need to do because otherwise, if we conflate them, we don't see the uniqueness and quality of each, right? Yeah. It's so important to do that. But yes. always we see our people together in struggle, each, yes. fighting, each yes. fighting to expand the realm of freedom and justice in the world and to seek and advance African and human good in the well-being of the world. That's what we're struggling for all the time. Yes. You guys are the consummate scholars and activists and educators. I mean, this, yeah, I'm just, thank you. Um, one of the things amongst like many of your great works, there seem to have been a focus on understanding, um, is it, it's been, it seemed to be a focus on understanding the spiritual, uh, peace or the spiritual literature, as well as achieving an effective model for my art. Why is this important for you? Mm -hmm. So. I do the spiritual, but I do especially the ethical. And the spiritual to me is deep emotional and rational commitment to the highest values and practices of humankind, right? So that can involve the divine, but it must always involve people also. Because as we said, and in my, the teachings is this, the good you want to do for God, do it for other people, especially for the poor, for God stands satisfied when the poor are cared for. And what happens here is that I stress the ethical because if you get into the spiritual, as, as Haji Malcolm taught, then you get to arguing about whose God is who and, and what is right and all that about theology. I, I don't I don't like to do that. So I stay with speaking truth and doing justice and caring for the poor and vulnerable among us, cherishing our and challenging our children, honoring our elders and our ancestors, right? Hmm? Having rightful relationship with the environment, constantly struggling against evil and injustice, injustice and oppression, and always pursuing, raising up and teaching and modeling the good. That's so important that we do that because the other becomes abstract if you don't practice it. And morality, ethics gives you a chance to practice. Do you speak true, right? So we can talk about Ra and Pata, right? And we can talk about ISIS, but what does that mean to our lives? What does it mean in my relationship with you? And you know, I studied this. I mean, you know, I studied that, but I had to choose. And that's what I was telling you about the distinction and the uniqueness of Kawaita, Mott. It's different from other people's Mott and the way they approach it. And that I want you to see that uniqueness, right? It's, it's, it's different, right? And one of the things that we always say is that, first of all, to not discredit or move away from the theological or the spiritual, which is sometimes collapsed with the theological, but to ask, how does this translate into quality relationships with each other and the world? 
what is your teaching about that? Because a lot of times, one of the things we had to confront when we first uh, started talking about Mott and introducing it as the fundamental focus for the discussion about uh, Egypt was that a lot of people want to talk about uh, the, the divinities. They want to talk about levitation. They want to inv involve and bring uh, Hindu yogism, yo yo yoga, and say that that's uh, Egyptian. Uh, moving pyramids with your mind and dismissing mathematics and geometry and physics, right? Just think about that. And my thing was, no, don't do that. Or they just wanted to take the trips. And again, I'm for the trips. We took more people than anybody else I know in history. We took 800 people, 200 people came afterward in our trip to uh, Egypt in 80, I think, 80. Seven, to my son, to my 87, right? So I'm not against that. But I had said, and I still think it would have been good if we had put some money aside to train people that we were already calling SEBA. Our organization trains moral teachers who study the text and can share the knowledge. And then some people say, oh, you shouldn't have this. These are mysteries. Mysteries about what, you know? Oh, you shouldn't go in there. What a white people been in there? Or oh, a woman shouldn't go in there. Why not a woman go in there? What is that about? Are we going to imitate our oppressor? Right? What is that? So the reality is that in the final analysis, I want to know how this translates as a practice of loving each other, of respecting each other, of caring for each other. You know, the rest of it. Because, you know, the white man, we talking about the chariots of the garden, some space people created what we do. So we have to say, this is math, and some mathematician, some black mathematician should work out a discussion of the building of the pyramid, not just being amazed by them, not just keep saying what the Greeks owe us. I don't, in my second dissertation, Mott, the moral idea in ancient Egyptian, the, Mott, the moral idea, the, Mott, the moral idea in ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethics. I never talked about what we gave the Jews, the Gentiles, the Greeks, the Romans. I talked about what we gave the world. Because to talk about what we give, gave the Greeks is to keep saying Greek is the uh, model. And only if you can say you gave them something or did something like them are you great. Mm, mm. Yes. We're the standard. We're That's the standard. The difference in, That's We're the difference in the way we talk. And the way other people talk that's the uniqueness and i yes i think it's so important for people to see that and again this is not being arrogant or elitist or anything but what it is is what what you said at the beginning setting a standard of excellence and holding to it yes here's another distinction we see africa as a moral idea and sufficient in itself we don't need to build from any other civilization, none other. We do, and I don't want to mention the religious capitals and all that, right, that people borrow from and build on. I'm just saying Africa is sufficient in itself, that our culture is old enough, wide enough, deep enough, rich enough, varied and flexible enough to answer any question we have if we study it rightfully and depthfully. That's my position. Mm, yes, yes. So, you know, only because we're talking about um, uh, Africa and Egypt, I, I wanted to, to, um, to ask this question. Is there anything that was, um, that was comparable or did the Egyptians study, or I'm sorry, did the, the Egyptians practice Anything that was comparable to Kwanzaa? Like, did they have any type yeah, of... they had a fa festival, the first fruit, called Pert and Men. I explained this in my book. Yeah, that's the oldest one we have on record, Pert and Men. The one that I use as a, a, a special model for is the South African, Southern African uh, festival, but especially the Zulu festival, Umkosi, Umkosi, because it had seven days, because it was at the end and beginning of the year. So and I'm looking for authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. And I never talked about that except internally until I wrote my book. 
and I put it in there. That's when people knew some of the references I used. But even then, they don't know all of them, but that was it. So, yeah, Egypt was one of them. Egypt is pert in men, the coming forth of men. Men was a divine patron and divine spirit of fertility and growth and productivity, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's what they celebrate, pert in men. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and what other um, African tra traditions um, can we uh, speak of that have a similar model um, as Maad? Oh, I, I, I do Yoruba. I really want to go. Now, let me tell you this. When I first started out, mm -hmm. we use Zulu culture more than any other culture. Mm, I okay. particularly, even though I studied a little of Egypt, I particularly stayed away from Egypt because I wanted to go south, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to go and say, all over Africa, there's wisdom, right? Yeah. And there's things to be taught and to learn and to build on. See, I don't, I don't let tradition imprison me. Everything we do is based on tradition and reason. So I start with tradition as a foundation. But I believe it's an obligation to expand that tradition, to build on that tradition, to make my contribution to that, right? And then to leave a legacy, just like my ancestors left, left a legacy. That's what we should do. What footprint, what trace of you will be left? And that is best achieved inside a collective structure, in an organization. Everybody's not going to do unique things that everybody can see. But if you belong to that, which is creative, which is constructive, right? And people raise and praise your name. You live forever. Ancient Egyptians said to do that which is of value is forever, the Hussia said. A person called forth by their work do not die for their name is raised and remembered because of it. We say that at every maziko or funeral sermon, when we uh, uh, funeral, uh, uh, what do you call it? funeral session, when we do when we do uh, what we call maziko, uh, maziko uh, performance uh, of, of the funeral services for uh, people. Mm -hmm. and so so so, uh, I, I did you Zulu because Zulu was. Uh, a military culture, and we were into building our paramilitary structure, the Sima Wachanga, even though the Saidi, the older people, were involved in military training and martial arts and all that, and the women too, at one level. We, we, we put a lot of interest on the young uh, people building this paramilitary organization. And no, no organization, you can, you can, you can let the white people tell you who was the best organization and all that, but no one was more organized, more militarily trained, ideologically ground, and more disciplined than our soldiers, our Simba, the young lion. We took that name from conversation that Malcolm had about the young lions, the Simba in the Congolese uh, liberation movement. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of respect for them, and he thought that Lumumba uh, Nana Patishna Mumba uh, was uh, one of the greatest men of all time. So we used to study Zulu. So that's an important culture. And in that Zulu culture is the concept of Ubuntu. Ubuntu uh, is, is, is about humanity, how you see your humanity. But we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't focus on that. We focused on the military training, but we also focused on the spirituality. Nkulu Nkulu, the great one, the first ancestor, Umslang. And... Um, Invading Kangi, the first comer. You know, we, we talked about that and we told a narrative. And that's how we talked about the seed and the corn. All of that comes from Zulu culture. But anyhow, I, 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 I want to go to the next thing, which is I want to say Ubuntu. So you, you want to study Zulu culture? Study Ubuntu as a fundamental generative concept. Ubuntu means our humanity, our understanding of how we relate to each other and the world. Mm. It's fundamental and signature contention is this, umuntu, ngumuntu, ngabantu. A person is a person through other people. I don't know how to be human except in the midst of other humans. If I live with dogs or if I go up in the mountain and live with wolves, how would I know my humanity? And how I treat other humans dictates, shapes how my humanity is understood and expressed. I remember Bishop Tutu saying a pretty thing. He said, we can only be human together. We can only be human together, 
Right. Okay. My second culture that I, I study is after ancient Egypt is Yoruba. I had done some study of Yoruba in the 60s, but again, I focused on this a little. But then I went back and I began to be tutored in Yoruba and to translate uh, uh, the Odu Ifa. And again, I didn't go with the divination. And I'm not putting the divination down. I got the Russians say that. People believe in that, and that's a spiritual practice that mm -hmm. grounds them and, and, and expands their conception of themselves and enhances their lives. So I certainly wouldn't do that. What I did was I went and I found the ethical teachings within the concept of the Odu, the verses uh, that were there. I asked, what is the ethical message? And so I made these translations and I wrote Asoye, which are commentaries on selected verses inside there. And um, uh, uh, one of the most beautiful things about it uh -huh. is the concept of any yarn. Any, I teach these things, by the way, in my class uh, on ethnic experience, when we get to culture. I divided the culture when I was creating, I divided it into history, culture, and current issues. And uh, four, four professors teach the class at the same time. Native American and African, Chicano, Latino, and Asian. And uh, what I wanted to do was to show people the ancient richness and barrenness of culture. So one of the things I do is take out these concepts, what I'm teaching you right now, I'm saying, and, and, and show people the deep thinking of African people. So here's a Yoruba. They introduced this concept I don't see in any other religion. And Again, that's what my second doctrine in religion and ethics, right? So I studied a lot of the religions, right? And not just Africans, but all over. And then this concept is Aniyan. Aniyan, in, in, in verse 78, 1, it says, Let's do things with joy, for surely humans have been divinely chosen to bring good into the world. And we say this means it is a fundamental mission and meaning of human life. So when in the word they use to say humans have been chosen, they call humans anion, chosen ones. And so it teaches us all humans are chosen, not just one group. Usually if you have a religion, especially the Abrahamic religions, each one of them claims they're the ones. And they think everybody has got a name. They got a name for everybody. Pagan, heathen, kafir, right? They got so many names for people. I mean, we don't even need to do all that, right? So here, this religion says all humans are chosen, and they're chosen not over and against anyone, as some of the scriptures say. Not over and against anybody, as other scriptures might say and do say, but chosen with everybody to do what? To bring good into the world to bring good into the world. So whether you are a journalist or a judge, a farmer or a pharmacist, a doctor, a lawyer, a student, a teacher, your fundamental purpose is to use your talent and your space to bring good into the world. And then it has another beautiful line, to increase good in the world and not let any good be lost. What a beautiful teaching. So your text is a beautiful text I was teaching one of my favorite verses from the Odu is this one. It, the name of their uh, tradition, and this is one of the few African religions that has a name, right? Usually African religions don't have no name because the, the, the religion is the culture. So everything, even Egypt didn't have this. This is something we introduced my, as a way to talk about ancient religion. The Egyptians didn't call the religion Mahd, they called this principle Mahd, right? Mm -hmm. But we need to study and we need to identify. So we say, okay, let's take this. This is the major principle. So anyhow, the ancient, the, the Yoruba called their tradition, the religious tradition, the spiritual tradition, Ifa, okay? Yes. So Ifa, it says this verse, it is by constantly studying Ifa, that we come to know Ifa. It is by missing the way that we come to know the way. And it is a road we have not traveled before that causes us to wander here and there. I want to take each one of those and show you something about it, see, because that's my whole thing, hermeneutics. 
which is interpretive practices, critical interpretive practices. I like to do that. So, so the first line says, it is by constantly studying Ifa that we come to know it. You can't just jump into something. That's what, what that's what Diop said about the people that are dilettantes in Egypt. He said, I got a big gap between me and the people that are like dilettantes, just superficially talk about Egypt, you know? He said, I want to turn this into a scientific concept. And I want to use it so that three things can be achieved. One, that we reconcile African history and human history, right? Second, that we build a new body of human sciences. And third, that we renew African culture. That's my, my I embrace that. So anyhow, it says, it's by constantly studying Ifa that you come to know it. So it teaches us the excellence of study, the excellence of learning, right? The ancient Egyptian teacher said, love learning, right? Love learning. And one verse says, love it like your mama. <laughs> so, so it's a one even more. But, the, but I, want, I want to say that Ifa is teaching this appreciation of knowledge. And I'm going to tell you another thing that it says about this in a minute. I'm coming back. Second thing it said is by missing the way that you come to know the way. In other words, don't be hurt because you didn't get it the first time. Mm. If I drive during the city and I, I don't know it and I come and I miss the turn off, I never miss it again because I remember that turn off. It is by missing the way that I come to know the way. Mm. That's so true. That's true. That's hey. True. Yes. <laughs> and then second, listen, the third one is, it is the road we have not traveled before that causes us to wonder, wonder here and there. Now, mm. some people drive to work and they never see anything around them. They just go rope, right? Mm -hmm. But if they miss, if sometimes if it's, if it's a construction on the road and you have to go around detour, you see things you never would have seen. And that's why it is a teaching that we should be open to the world, to go different paths, to see different things. And as Langston Hughes said in his, his book, to wonder as you wander. As you wander from place to place, see new things, engage new things. That's the beauty of it. And it's interesting that in Odu Ifa, like in ancient Egypt, knowledge is the path to excellence. Knowledge is the path to excellence. Ifa says there's a narrative of creation in which people come to Orumila, uh, 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 the master teacher witness to creation. And I say, they believe in reincarnation. So they tell Orumilai, the master teacher, he said, you know what? We're tired of going back heaven and earth. Why can't we just stay in heaven? He said, you cannot um, uh, stop going to heaven and earth until we make the world good for everybody. Hey, what is, am I my brother's keeper? Am I my sister's keeper? What is this? You know, people, well, I can't get to heaven till I get you together. Maybe you don't want to go. You know, maybe you don't. But see, that's not the point. It's to teach you the cooperative character, the Ujima character of life, mm. that we're not saved by ourselves. Even in a heavenly sense, even in a spiritual mm -hmm. sense, we are not saved by ourselves. And so what it says, so the people asked him, and he said, you all have to create the good position. So they said, what is the good position? for everybody that Oludumare, Oludumare is the name for God. Oludumare has ordained this position for everyone. Just look at that, that God and says that everybody ought to have a good life. This is ordained. Some scriptures say the poor will always be with us. <laughs> well, hey, you know, hey, here's the that says everybody has a right to a good life. This is divinely ordained. Yeah. So people asked him, what is this good position? He said, the good position is a good world. Then he starts listing the criteria for a good world. The first one is full knowledge of things. They say, how do we create a good world? They say, adequate wisdom to gain the world. Adequate wisdom is adequate moral wisdom. And the word for govern the world, the word akoso, govern, means pull and gather people together for good purposes. Akoso. Gather people together for good purpose. Mm. So I can just go on, right? And then, and also one last thing for the women, there's something we call 
in 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 our organization, us and in our uh, spiritual teachings and ethical teachings, we call it the Oshun question. And in it, Odun, Oshun uh, asked um, uh, Odun Jumari, oh, Odun Jumari sends uh, 400 male Orisha. Orisha are divine spirits that help uh, Odun Jumari in dealing with the world, making the world good, mm -hmm. and send one female. And he says, say, they were supposed to go to make the world good. So when the males got there, they don't, they don't treat the woman right. They don't include her. And so she uses her power to ensure that nothing they do is done well. <laughs> so when they come back to heaven, all of the mighty, though they say, all of the mighty, we were not able to create, to do the good you asked us to do. The first question he asked them is what about the one woman among you did you treat her with due respect they said we did not he said treat her with good respect and all you do will prosper they went back and uh -huh. they included her and they did good in the world and the teaching says unless we respect women we can never have a rightful world so uh -huh. what they taught is that we must first recognize the indispensability of the female. That's the first thing. Second, we must respect her as an agent as capable as us with talents like males. And third, we must understand that if we're going to do a program, they must be not symbolically included but they must participate fully according to their wish and capacity, right? And so what that teaches us is that we should always ask the ocean question, where in any project, any project we start, where's the woman? Mm. Ocean question. Mm. Yes. Yes. So I'm just showing you how we can use there's one other one, Dogon, and I can talk about it later, but I want to stop here and see if you got another question. <laughs> and Dogon is very important too. And people have superficial concepts of Dogon, but they have a concept of creation. And one of their yes. symbols, of course, is one of the symbols of the seven principles, creativity I used. Yes. Okay, no, you you gotta you you gotta hit us with the Dogon. You have to <laughs> go on to another question. You have. <laughs> <laughs> one of the beautiful things about the Dogon is they teach that. Everything that would be in creation already was. Mm. Everything that would be already was. That the potentiality of creation was already there when Amma, the name for God, began mm. to create the world. And Amma creates the world first, and it doesn't work out right. Now, this is a whole different, this is like process theology, if anybody knows process theology. All of the, uh, uh, Amma is working out the world as he goes, right? Which really gives us a chance to say, okay, I can make a mistake. I yeah. make a mistake. You know, I was thinking hard. the same thing. This is hard for people because they want to see God always helping them and always doing mm -hmm. this. But here's another way to talk about the divine being. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then he makes a worm and uh, he, <laughs> he makes twins, right? And so there's a pair of twins, Ogo, Ogo and uh, the pale fox. What's the pale fox name? I forgot the pale fox. <laughs> in fact, it's in uh, the Anima Rainbow. Yurugu, Yurugu, Yurugu. So Yurugu is a disruptive figure. And then there's Ogo. It's not the devil now. See, whenever people who are Christian or belong to the Abrahamic tradition, they're always looking for the devil. But it's not the devil, because sometimes people can play similar roles, good and bad, like Seth in uh, ancient Egyptian. People used to want Seth to be just the devil. But just actually, come time, is seen and appraised and revered as a protector of the realm, because he can make war, and that's what he's for. So things are for themselves. 
I, I don't want to I don't want to divert from the of Dogo. So I'll I'll go back. So what I like about this is the potentiality of being. And ancient Egyptian has a similar concept. The potentiality of being that we can work and be creative, and we cannot feel bad or feel unready because what we first develop is not as perfect as it should be. There is this concept we teach in Kawaita of progressive perfection, that we are more perfect at each stage of our lives so that the A we get in the third grade is not the same A as we get in the fifth. Certainly not the same grade we get in the 10th, 12th, or the same A we get in college. Please rescue me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah. So there's a progressive perfection in life. There's a progressive perfection in your love, in your partnerships, in your marriages, right? There's a progressive perfection and you're constantly trying to improve it. And there's no end to what can be done. It also shows, and if you want to see a full um, discussion of this, it's in my book, Introduction to Black Studies uh, at St. Cloud Press, uh, uh, fourth edition. But it's in every edition. I, I put it in there, discuss. I, I like to dogon also for this, the concept of knowledge. There are four stages of knowledge. Giri so, beni so, bola so, and so die. Get it so is first knowledge. You just see it. I mean, it's lightweight. You know, that's why sometimes when I hear people say, we used to say to mm, get it so, first knowledge, you know, <laughs> just, just heard something about Egypt or Dogon and they just go with it. <laughs> okay. And the next is Benny So. So this is analytic. You begin to look at it. Bolo So. Is you look at it in comparison. And then finally, this is how it developed in Kawaii. In the last days, mm -hmm. so die means clear knowledge. Clear knowledge. Mm -hmm. The okay. clear word, in other words. That's what's a clear word. And so die is the deepest form of knowledge. And I like that. And I've written a paper on that too. And, and I presented it at NCBS. So I try to do all the cultures. People just say, Mahalana, won't you? Is that somebody else besides Egypt? Now, first of all, try to just appreciate Egypt, right? Do that. But yes, if you want to study another culture, good. I'd be glad to study it with you. Pick, pick one, because it's a challenge to me then to learn it so I can talk with you. But I can't do all of it. One of the things I want to do is to learn from Akan civilization. I don't have time right now to study because I got too many projects. But eventually, mm. I would like to learn Akan language, and I would like to learn its culture. I really respect Kwame J.J., who has done a tremendous job on explaining Akan culture. And of course, all of us know Sankofa, right? But when we talk about Sankofa, it's a reference rather than a resource. Harry Tubman is a reference rather than a resource. I use Harry Tubman as a resource to explain the concept of freedom and the redefinition of freedom. I use Sankofa as an analytical concept, as a project orientation. It is deep thinking. It is retriever, recovery, reconstruction, and expansion of the tradition that you learn. That's a whole different, that's why I say it's a whole different kind of way of talking about. Yeah. And I want you to see the difference. Otherwise, it's all leveled and it's just all good. It is all good, but there are distinctions in it. Yeah. Distinctions and levels of excellence. No, 100%. Um, wow. Um, so, you know, this is this is actually my last question, but you talked about this throughout, um, throughout our conversation. Uh, you brought up the Husia. And um, can you just... You know, tell us what the Husia, what the Husia is, and why should we study it? The Husia is a collection of ancient Egyptian texts that I uh, collected, translated, and wrote commentary on. Mm -hmm. I studied the original texts. I retranslated them from the way that the established order, I shouldn't say that, the way the Egyptian took took, and I gave a new interpretation to it. 
in fact, uh, in my book, uh, which my dissertation, my second dissertation for my doctor, second doctor, uh, I published it and uh, one of the foremost Egyptologists uh, in the world uh, asked, could he write a forward to it? Because he was so impressed. He, he said, first, you know, <laughs> it's a long story. When I first started doing this, I, I didn't have an Egyptologist at USC. The only Egyptologist was at uh, UCLA. And so I met him and, you know, he respected me after he heard what I was doing, but he challenged me because he had a concept of Egypt as an oriental dis despotism. He didn't use those words, but they make like the pharaohs a monster because they creep, they're going along with the Abrahamic tradition that sees Egypt as a land of bondage, even though there's no evidence, there's no historical or archaeological evidence of that. That's a religious narrative. It's not a historical narrative. And so we have to make a distinction between our religion, a narrative of faith, and our history, a narrative of fact, right? And so what happens is I told him, look, man, I can show where it's not just a uh, pharaoh, there's respect for the people too. He said, I'd be glad to see just one. I brought him several, right? But my whole book was a response to that to demonstrate the depthfulness and beauty of ancient Egyptian culture. At the same time, yeah. uh, I remember that Dr. Ben, Ben Joe Kinnan, he had said, we need a black Bible. But I had said, no, we don't need a black Bible. We need a black sacred text. The Bible is yeah. a Christian. And to talk about a black Bible is to use the Christian Bible as a reference. We don't say we need a black Quran, and we don't say that the Quran is a Muslim Bible. And we certainly wouldn't say that the Bible is a Christian Quran. You know, we, we don't say that. We don't we don't say that. So don't say that with African. So I said, no, we need a sacred text. And so I began to write that. I did this in 84, and that's when I called the first ASCAT conference, right? And, you know, pull the people together. And, you know, we, our organization, us funded the conference, did all the work to bring people together, et cetera. And then we have structured it and published the literature. And one of the things that I published that year was the Hosea. Now, when we did the Hosea, because Egypt had many names for many sacred texts, again, I'm going to collect them, put them in a collect, and I put a name on it. And I chose the name for the sacred text, Husea, which are the two fundamental powers by which Ra created the world. Yeah. Ra, and in in, 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 in he has many forms, Kunun, the Pata, Ptah, uh, the uh, craft, it's a lot of things, craft person, uh, craft beer. But what it means is this creator. So Ra said, I make myself into many, into millions, into millions. So Ra has many forms. So anyhow, I say, Ra, use who and Sia. Who, Sia is <clears throat> exceptional generative insight. And Sia, I put, Sia is exceptional insight and who is authoritative and generative speech, creative speech, it's creative speech. So first, I'm, so, so, so he conceived the world in his mind, Sia, right? In a deep thinking mind. And he spoke the world into existence with his speech. And so I put it together to Husia, which means authoritative, and created, pardon me, uh, authoritative and creative speech of exceptional insight, exceptional and generative insight, exceptional and generative insight. So that's that's what Husea means. And then I organize it into seven uh, fundamental kinds of books. Again, that's the word seven here. Uh, and then so. Um, uh, I uh, then uh, just translated and I began to take excerpts. When I first did this, I said, I would like to finish this. I think it would take me 20 years. Wow. 
wow. it's been over 30 and I haven't finished yet because I write in between and I don't have the large community that other faiths might have for discussion. That's what I wanted to build with ASCAC and we couldn't get it done because people got to talking and hating and caring. No. But eventually, because our organization, we still have Sabre, we still have the conversation. And in fact, I'm going to talk to you about it because I'm going to uh, set up a, a seminar beginning February mm. to teach MOT for those who want to know it and who are interested in becoming Saber moral teachers in the tradition. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to come on. You're gonna have to come on back and talk about that. All right, and yeah. I want to talk to you about it because it's also Ujamaa project. If you're interested, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I are, thought you would be. Yes, yes. yes. I like how you just sprung that on on me. That yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> family, here are some um, Dr. Karanga's um, websites that. Um, those are some ones that you gave me last time you were here, you know, where you can um, get all type of information. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. The official. Um, That's so much beautiful work still to be done. Yeah. I just look forward to it. And I, I think that what you're doing is important. And there are other people that we need to get together and figure yes. out something we can do cooperatively. Yes. And this perhaps is a beginning, what we're talking about now. So yes. this is good. This is good. I'm glad. Yes. And thanks again. Give warm greetings to our brother Taki. Mm -hmm. I will. And you know what? And I just to say, family, about this, um, about the Husia. I was so excited. Oh my God. I couldn't wait for this book to come. And this, even though it's like, look, it's it seems like it's a relatively, you know, thin book. No, like one page, you have to sit, you gotta read it a couple of times. And I'm like, damn, you take like two pages of notes. Or, or three on just one page. This is so, and, and I'm just, um, you know, the way that you're just able to turn out these books, it's like you've been living 300 years, Dr. Karanga. <laughs> like, really, you know, I, yeah, this is, thank you. I wish I had more time to write because I, I have so much, but I do a lot of active work because I'm an activist scholar. Mm -hmm. and a scholar activist and a scholar intellectual activist yeah. etc so but i need to do work and i need to sit down and do this and i want to train another generation of people into yeah. this so that yeah. they know this and they can pass this on as a, uh, as, a as a legacy so it's so yes. important yes 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 <laughs> yes i mean that's yeah because this this can't this can't leave with with you you know, this is a, uh, you have a whole body of knowledge that, yeah. And I really want you to also get, when you get a chance, get the Odu Ifa and see that too, and how beautiful the passages are, right? Mm -hmm. Like the first passage saying, you know, um, let's not engage the world hurriedly. Let us not grasp at the rope of wealth impatiently. That which should be dealt with with, with uh, mature judgment. Let us not deal with in a state of emotion let us mm, let, let us ooh, when we reach a, a cool and peaceful place let us rest sufficiently let us give due attention to the future and let us always give due appreciation to the consequences of things mm. that is a beautiful concept not engaging the world hurriedly not grasping at the world we're at the rope of wealth and patiently treating things that are serious with mature judgment rather than simple un unleashed emotion, resting sufficiently when you find a cool and peaceful place, giving prolonged attention to the future and deep consideration to the consequences of the consequences of things. That is key. That is a beautiful way to understand the world. That's Oduifa. That's the first verse. So, okay, um, when you say the Odu Ifa, so the, so are there like two, 256 Odus? I mean, yes, like there's 256 Odu okay. and innumerable, I mean, innumerable verses. People creating verses all the time. It's an open sacred text. And the teachers, the Babalao, 
can add. You know, they can add verses to it. I I just I just did the old standard uh, things, and I didn't use all of them because some of them were mainly divination. I'm looking just for the ethical teachings, right? Yeah. Timothy, can I show them the cover? But you I had to go through them. all of them to find the ethical teachings. You still had to study all of them. Yes, yes, wow. I need to. Yeah, I mean to you know for you, Timur. To... I don't know if you can see this. It might be too dark. But this is Odu Ifa. Oh, that's nice. I put it in a bind so I could open it. This is not the regular bind of it. It, it, it turns better for me. It opens better when I do yeah. it. Yeah. And you can, we can get that from your, um, from the. No, uh, yeah, Sankori. I don't own the press. A sister owns the press. But okay. you, can, you can get it from Sankori Press. Okay. Hmm? Tim, you put it in the chat, I think. Yeah, Timo, you put it in the chat. Oh, she put it in there? You said you did? She did. Sakori Press. I can I can put the name up. S-A-N-K-O-R-E Press. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I see it from the back. Yeah, this is a God, this this is a ooh, this is a must-have. Um and Sankori is from the uh uh famous world famous university in Timbuktu. Sankori is a district, uh, and that's uh, that's where the university was, University of Sankori. Sometimes people say University of Timbuktu, but it's like UCLA. You can say uh, UCLA, University of California at Los Angeles, or University of California in Westwood. But Westwood is just a district. Los Angeles is a city. Timbuktu is a city. Sankori is a district. So University okay. of Sankori. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, thank it's, you. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful History. They taught all the major subjects that most all the major subjects we teach today. Many of the, I should say, many of the major subjects we teach today. Wow. Physics, geometry, you know, algebra, uh, uh, philosophy, religion, history, sociology. Hmm? Wow. Um, thank you, Dr. Karanga. Thank and you. I, and I see your 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 um, your Kwanzaa set up in the back. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't see it when you were little, and I was like, "Look, I was like, wow, that's nice." Yes, that's yes. Nice. We wow. need to do that. Happy Kwanzaa and happy holidays to all of y'all. Yes, and, uh, yes, and make sure you tell um uh, Miss Tiamayo hello. All thank right, Tiamoyo. Tiamoyo, Tia you know she returns the greeting to you warmly. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Okay, so we will definitely be in touch because we got to talk about this um uh for February. Okay. okay. I look forward to it. Yes. You take Likewise. care, and I want to just close the way I usually close. Yes. You know, this is our duty to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive ways. And this too, Black people, continues the struggle. Keep the faith. Hold the line. Love and respect our people and each other. Practice the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles. Seek and speak truth. Do and demand justice. Be constantly concerned with the well-being of the world and all in it. And dare help rebuild the overarching movement that prefigures and makes possible the good world we all want and deserve to live in and leave as a legacy worthy of the name and history African. Hotep, I say, Hedy. Hotep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Family, oh, listen, Dr. Uh, Karanga is a class act right there. He, I'm going to leave his information up so you can um, make sure that you can get onto um, his websites and support. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a conversation about um, February with him. A class on my eye, like that's good. That's that's super cool. Um, family, I want to also, I have to give some, some shout outs to a couple of people. Um, because I tell you, you guys were straight holding me down um, today um, with these comments. Bakari, thank you. Every, Bakari, James, um, I hope I'm saying that right, James, Gauze. Every time he was saying something, and I was like, God, yeah, I was, you guys had, you had, you had already put it in the chat and I could just put it up on the screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, can, you guys about to be working for Hoppy in a minute right now, because that's what's up. 
Thank you so much. You know, a lot of times when you're sitting here listening, it's like I'm I'm hung up on some he said and he didn't said 12 other um, jewels. And so I just want to thank you guys for repeating things that um, that our guests say and um, in writing so we can put them up there so that, you know, it just jogs people's you know uh, minds as they're listening. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, family. Um, I want to remind you, we have. Um, this awesome event, like, okay, you know, Dr. Karenga done laid it out about black excellence right there, black excellence. We are having this event February 4th and um, it is gonna be a dynamite. If you cannot get to New York City, this is a live event. You know, New York City hasn't seen too many live events since COVID. And so, um, you know, we're just like, you know, we really want to get the family together. And so this is happening February 4th, 2023. You kick off Black History Month, um, Black History Year, okay, the right way. So you, you know, come check us February 4th, and it's from 1 to one to something, 8, 9 o'clock. It's going to be fabulous. We um, have the awesome Dr. Ken Harris, who was also in the chat today. Uh, he will be the host he is the president of the National Business League. We have Dr. Susan Tata, Riza Islam, Dr. Georgina Falou, Professor James Small, Infudishi Juhutimis, and Kaba Kamene. They will all be doing special presentations, lectures um, during this event. Also performing, we have Brand Nubian will be performing. You can't have Black Excellence without Brand Nubian, I tell you. Um, and we have Jamar Milton, who is a uh, also a conscious rapper, part of the Shrine of Maad. He's 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 dope. Taki actually just had a uh, I did a happy talks with him and Jabari Yozazi. So check that out. And then also we have um, lyrical faith. She's a young poet. You guys are gonna like her. And now if if that wasn't enough, we are also gonna show a special extended clip of Hoppy the role of economics in the development of civilization. And for some of you guys that don't know, we actually have a whole documentary, two hours and 12 minutes, with over 30 scholars talking about the, the, the constructs of economics and how we started. <laughs> we, you know, we're the ones that started and, and, um, and developed these constructs of um, economics. And this film, we look at the money. It's the history of money. So please check that out, family. If you haven't, you can go to happyfilm.com and get your um, your your movie. You can get everything there. You can get your tickets for black um, for for black excellence. You can get merchandise. You can also you know um, grab our DVD or a digital download. All of it's there. And then also, if that wasn't enough, we're gonna also have Amadeus Christ will be in the house as well with his film, um, Out of Darkness, Heavy as the Crown, Volume One. So he's going to be showing the, you know, extended clip of his, and he will be, you know, saying something that he ain't said to nobody until he's going to come, come tell us on February fourth, and we don't even know what it is. So he's going to, you know, make an announcement about, about something, and so we're going to have lots of time for um, for everyone to network. We only have 10 vendors will be in the house, so we have a few slots left. If you're trying to get a, a vending um, slot, you it, it'd behoove you to um, to get your ticket now. And also, uh, you know, with this whole event, you know, we a lot of people, um, it's going to be live stream. And, um, a, you know, a lot of people couldn't make it to the Power of Unity conference that we had in Detroit earlier this year. And, you know, afterwards, people are like, oh, I wish I could have, you know, been there. You know, New York is, it's just, we're just on the, the East Coast. You got time to plan it. You know, this is a perfect Kwanzaa event, um, you know, for your family. And uh, it, it's going to be a, a really, it's going to be beautiful. And we're going to have every, all, almost all the cast members that were part of Hoppy will be in the house that live in the New York City area. Okay, so you guys can hang out with everybody. Um, and, you know, this is not one of those events where, oh, I'm here. You can't talk to me. It's not that type of event. It's going to be a nice um, day at the JPAC Center out in um, Queens, New York, February 4th. So please, family, make sure you get your tickets. Don't wait to the last minute. I know how we do. But this is the thing. People was waiting for the last minute and the VIP tickets are already gone. When we was trying to tell y'all, get y'all tickets now, <laughs> because, you know, 
we don't foresee any uh, tickets being available at the door. Okay. So that means you won't get your ticket now because we would hate to be like, oh, we can't let you in. And you have to get the live stream and you have to watch the live stream from your car. It's not a good look. So if you plan on being here, just secure your tickets right now. Okay. Um, you know, make sure you, um, you know, just get your tickets right now. Also, I want to, um, you know, talk about uh, somebody had asked about the trip to, to Egypt. You know, anybody that's in the chat that's been um, traveling with us, just, you know, um, give a little like high five or some type of little symbol in the chat so people can know. And they can, you know, you can actually contact them and get more info. You don't know, get information that you might not want to ask me or just, you know, ask as, as, as being like a participant who, you know, who, uh, who, you know, who's traveled with us. But this trip is going to be phenomenal. 2023, we took this year, we took two trips um, to, to Kemet. Next year, we're going to Kemet, but we're doing something a little different. You can choose from one or two groups. We either, um, we will have people who are going to Egypt and Dubai. And then we also have people who, who, are, who will go to Egypt and also take a Nile cruise. And there's a couple of days that we will all interact together as one big family. But, you know, we're going to have these two groups going on. And if you go to Aket Tours, um, and check out the, um, you can check out the pricing. And this is the thing, you put down your $300 just to reserve your spot and you pay on it every month. Because, you know, once you say you're going to do something, you, you know how the, the universe just starts opening up all different type of ways and you have time to try to, you know, get this together. And I ain't trying to be in nobody's pocketbook right now, but I, you know, if you have enough time to get something done, you can make it happen. And this is a try. This is a trip. It's a, it's not only a trip of your lifetime because I feel like you know we should be taking trips to to Egypt, to not only Egypt but you know any place in Africa as a pilgrimage every year. It helps us reconnect to who we are and to and to discover new new things about us and our history and our culture. So you know, let this be the first trip. I remember taking my my first trip and I was just like, wow, I, was like, I, I will always be coming here. <laughs> you know, um, it's something about Africa that just is it's very soothing, soothing to my um, so, soothing to me. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys feel the same way. Um, but yes, family, um, we will uh, you know, if you want to know any more information, you can go, you can go to iCatTours.com and, and get more information about that. Also, let's see. Um, I want to say peace to King Simon. Simon, I'm so sorry. I, for, I, I meant to come back to your question, but I promise I will ask Dr. Karanga your, your question and make sure he answers it and let you know. Um, let's see. I, I think I, I covered everybody. Um, I covered everything. You know, I just um, thank you guys for signing on. Next week, we will have some more Black excellence because it's all about black excellence. Everyone in this chat has black excellence. I hope you guys are using your gifts and your talents, just like um, Dr. Karenga said, you know, you have to use it for good and to move, move our people forward. Um, you know, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is another one that was just hanging right on in there. And of course my boy, Lucio. You know, um, you guys were just uh, really giving a lot of support in the chat. So I, want, I really want to thank you. And I'm telling you now, if you get an email from me saying, look, I need for you to be part of the happy family. Don't don't act surprised. OK, <laughs> but I do want to say um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. 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 Jojo. He, he was Dr. Karenga was was excellent. All right, family. So I think that is it. Um, you know, please make sure that you uh, liked and shared this video and make sure that you are, you're following us on all our social media platforms. OK, uh, we're really close to 30, 30 K on um, on um, YouTube. So we know a lot of you guys are watching us, but you may not, you know, even know that you, if you're subscribed or not. So just make sure when you go to your YouTube page that um, that you are subscribed and that you are hitting that little bell for notifications. And that way, as soon as we go live, you know it, and um, you can get to learning like we are. So, um, you know, please like and share this video. 
and um, and also follow us. We're at Happy Film on all on everything on Instagram, on Facebook, and um, YouTube and Twitter. And also, thank you guys for all the um, the Cash App love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you can hit us up on a dollar sign Happy Film. And also, if you you know are on YouTube, you can hit the super chats. And if you are on Facebook, we now have stars, so you can buy stars. But, you know, know that any money that you contribute to, um, to the happy movement, it goes right into the happy movement. We, um, we employ Black folks who are, you know, doing the same things that we're doing. And um, like this event coming up, um, Black Excellence, this is not not cheap, <laughs> you know, but so your donations are helping us with securing all the things to make sure that February um, 4th happens and that it happens nice because we have to do things um, just like um, uh, Dr. Karenga said in, in excellence, in excellence, in black excellence. Um, all right. So I think, I think that is it. Um, yes, man, I forgot to ask him about that. You are correct. They are building the biggest. Um, I, when I was in Detroit two weeks ago, and they talked about this Canard um, G Mac over at um, Alkaboo Land. Shout out to Alkaboo Land Center. That was nice. They brought down Baba Quazi and his wife. Um, and they were talking about this huge Canard. So we're going to have to get a picture of this Canard. We're going to have to have a conversation with um, them and see if we can, um, uh, you know, kind of cover that. That's, that's really, yeah, that is, yeah. Yes, yes. That is going to be huge. That's going to be huge. And I know Dr. Karenga is speaking um, at the event um, via um, Zoom. So yeah, I need you support Circle um, Detroit to send me an email um, at infohoppyfilm.com so we can talk about that. Or I'm just going to reach out to GMAC because GMAC is always a person who I, who I speak with. Um, but yes, so you know this i hope you guys are are celebrating kwanzaa there is a um if you go to our facebook um page one of our our facebook friends um i'm making sure i spell her name right um nubia um uh, oniki she's an archaeologist as well but um she also has these beautiful kwanzaa gifts, um, or not gifts, but Kwanzaa sets that I bought. I actually bought it last year. That was her first year doing them. And they're beautiful. It, everything. She sends everything to you. So if you get out, if you get, you know, if you get with her right now, <laughs> you will be able to get, you know, get your, get, get your kit before the 26th. And so uh, I hope that you guys are, you know, taking pictures and send them to us. Just tag us, Happy Film, of your Kwanzaa celebration. We'll make sure that um, that we send those. Um, not, not only will we post them on our social media, but we will also make sure that Dr. Um, Karenga gets, um, you know, gets a copy because he really does, um, you know, have, um, you know, he he really, I tell you, he really did a good job with this Kwanzaa. And Rob Moza, um, no, I do not have 19 keys information, but you should find it and send it to him, um, send it to me because yeah, he's a, um, I like what he's been doing lately. Yeah. Yeah. 19 keys. All right, family. I think that is it. I know I keep saying, I think that's it, but I really do think that's it. All right. So in the, um, in the words of, uh, you know, my, one of my um, favorite people, Professor James Small. Peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?